Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience, contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends get together and play 5th edition rules in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy. I am going to be playing the DM for our third season, which you probably know by now is in Icewind Dale because this is literally our season three finale. Joining me for this season and its finale are some of my favorite people. I am Scala. I play Wink Wuggins, Halfling Bard, Rouser of Rabble, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty sad to say goodbye to this character for a while. I've enjoyed playing them a lot. Aw. I'm Andy. I play Everett, the Reborn Ranger, who put their backstory in the hands of a benevolent DM and has now put his future in the hands of a malevolent demigod question mark we'll see what happens Everett's stuck between a rock and a hard place <laughs> and a cold place yeah <laughs> literally a rock oh and i'm jimmy i play jib the sea elf fighter and um jib i guess has made some good friends here in icewind dale but just can't fucking wait to <laughs> leave this place fucking icewind dale fucking icewind dale yeah I get it. Speaking of making friends, <laughs> it'd be really cool if you would be our friends on Discord. I'm not going to prattle on about the other stuff. Let's do one episode where we don't do that, but definitely join our Discord. But you know. Be our friends. But you but know. But you know. If you know, you know. And you know. But you know. All right. All that secret little, you know, marketing stuff out of the way. Let's get into our finale. Woo! After coming to terms with Oral's request, our party left Grimscale atop Iskra, Oral's Rock seeing Oral and Case Garen Kang in ice. After a tense journey home, the party learned that Tregan served in the war, and afterwards joined Fail Barash some 25 years ago, shortly after it was founded. After rallying the city in spite of a split militia and reuniting with Isaac, the party made their way into an underground lab beneath Fail Barash Incorporated to find and destroy the accelerator and put an end to Fail Barash himself. After killing Tregan, the party was beckoned by Fail to enter his chamber. Hell yeah. So, you are in this room, the corpse of Tregan in front of you. Again, the accelerator encased behind a large cage and glass structure. Tragen had mentioned that you would need a key, presumably on the person of Fail himself. And after Fail beckoned you, a mechanical lift on the left side of the room was there for you to go down and greet him at his chambers. Isaac is with you. What would you all like to do? Well, we're in the belly of the beast now. I would agree, my friend. How are you all on potions? Well, I don't have any potions, since you ask. I don't think. This is all I have. Isaac pulls out three healing potions. Does Dragon have anything on him? I search his body. Yeah, I'll go and help Wink do that. Always forget to do that. I search his charred corpse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and search through his charred corpse and roll me investigation. Sure. That is an 11. And I got a 15. Awesome. On the 11, you find his weapon, which was the rapier. On the 15, you also find, it looks unfamiliar to you, Everett, but it looks like a sending stone, but it is longer and a little bit larger. You can go ahead and roll me Arcana if you'd like. Mm. Odd. Not 20. A 22. 12. Nothing worth reporting. Awesome. On a 22, as you look down at this wink and you survey it, you can tell that this was certainly Tragen's spellcasting focus. Hmm. What this focus allows you to do, wink, is once per long rest, when you roll any vocal-based spell, so Tasha's hideous laughter, dissonant whispers, you can do so with advantage or force disadvantage against the save. Oh, that's neat. Cool. cool. Convenient that it identified itself, too. I identified it. High as hell, <laughs> Arcana roll. Uh, looks like I might be able to make use of this doohickey. It's literally Kate Sith. <laughs> it's Kate, but it absolutely is, yeah. The rapier just appears to be a normal rapier? Normal rapier, yep. Okay. Mm. Just in time for our final confrontation, it would seem. Speaking of time, he didn't seem to be in too much of a hurry. What do we say? We get our bearings here and mosey our way over there within an hour or so. Such ego. He seems to want us fighting at our best. The fool. It is his hubris. It always has been. I hope this time his confidence will get the best of him. Isaac says this, though, and motions back to the potions, seeing if any of you would like to take one. Let me see how I feel after we take a bit of a breather. Perfect. Might be better to save that for whatever's next. I agree. All right, cool. So a short rest, then? A short rest. All right, let me see what Isaac has here. Three, D10. And you can use up to half on a short rest, right, of your hit dice? Correct. Okay, cool. Everett is fully healed. 
I will sing a song of rest as well. All right. Unless the dice really fuck me over, I'm gonna try to bring Isaac back to full. <laughs> well, if Isaac is rolling hit dice, he can also add another six hit points to whatever he heals. All right, he is topped up. One shy. I think that's fine. One shy of full? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that last hit point is worth any resources. Mm. Unless there's like one of those things where it hits you with advantage if you're not at full or some shit like that. Well, Well, so be it. Yeah, that's right. All right, well, Jib barely participated in the last combat, so he's fully (laughs) tanked up. He's got all his stuff. Isaac will ask, and how are you feeling, my friend, to you, Everett? I am better now. Perhaps we should split those potions among us, then. I got a bit of healing magic myself, so probably the best the three of you each hold one. Awesome. And Jeppy, just remind us, are we doing using potions as actions or using potions as bonus actions? That was our house rule. What is our house rule? And we'll go with that. Bonus action, right? Mine was bonus on yourself, action on someone else. Yeah, I like that. Okay. All right. You all enter the lift. Hang on a second. Before we enter the lift, can we look down and see how far down this mechanism seems to go. When you say mechanism, do you mean the lift or what the accelerator is in? The lift. Can we look down and take a look at how far down the shaft is? Or is it obscured? Sure. Give me perception. It is obscured in some way. Okay. 15. 13. Okay. It's hard to say for sure because it does go to a complete black, but that pitch darkness begins early. You have no way of knowing, but it could be as little as 40 feet because the darkness begins 10 feet further down. Jib can see 60 feet in the dark. Do I see 60 feet? And you can see that it ends about 45 feet, 50 feet down. It's not very far. Okay. Just trying to figure out if it's uh, magical darkness or not. Because you're already underground. This thing doesn't go that much further. Gotcha. We got some sort of plan going into this. Well, I'm going to attack with my sword, hold up my shield quite a bit. How meta do you want to be here? I mean, we can strategize in or out of character. Okay. I think just for the sake of discussing things, it probably makes more sense to strategize out of out character. Of character. Yeah. It's just we can talk tactics more directly. All right. So in our level up... Everett did take Assassin, but the strongest caveat of that level three ability is if I get a surprise on the first round, which I don't see how that's possible in this situation. Unless Wink were to try and talk him up, try to negotiate. I could also cast invisibility on you. Mm. Then you need to attack before the combat starts officially. Okay. You know, unless he has some... Way to see invisibility or true seeing or something. Uh Uh-huh. No guarantees that isn't possible, but you should be able to... Okay, okay, okay. So Wink asks... We got some sort of plan going into this? And I will respond, If there is a way, Wink, I believe I have seen you use invisibility before to cast it on me. If I am able to get a drop on our adversary, a surprise in earnest... I will be able to unleash a very devastating opening move. But for someone like Felborash to be unsuspecting may require a bit of clever wordplay. Felborash seems the type of person who likes to talk. Takes one to no one, right? I was hoping you would say something like this. So, yeah, might be I can keep Now hold on here a minute, because it seemed to be that Felborash could kind of see what we were doing in this room who's to say he's not listening to everything we're saying right now jib's gonna look around the room everett will aid jib in doing that (laughs) thank you let's call that a 16 investigation to see if there's listening devices or cameras in this room on that roll you can see what look to be cameras tucked behind the encasement pointing out into the room with the accelerator in its view when you say that fail barrage doesn't seem to respond Well, I wouldn't either. You don't know if that means he cannot hear you through these cameras, or he can and he's trying to stay coy. You don't know for sure. Perhaps not the best place for strategizing. If we want a little privacy, we got a little bit more juice in that charm that those Twingas gave us. Now that's a good idea. Ah, yes. Wink, you are correct. Everett will pull out the tiny hut charm. I am going to reread the spell (laughs) to see if that's going to actually do what we think it will. Let's kick Jeppy (laughs) off the call. (laughs) (laughs) No! Fail Barash goes over the speaker. Your DM tells me everything. (laughs) 
<laughs> it just has spells and other magical effects. So one would assume that there is some magical effect at the source of whatever constructed cameras these are. Sure. No, for sure. I mean, this is fucking yeah. D&D. All this is augmented by some sort of magic. It's like a divination-based type of device. Yep. Wink, I think this is wise. And Everett will cast the tiny hut. Sleep. In a corner of this room where it seems like it's going to be out of view of these cameras anyways. Go ahead and roll stealth against where you place the charm. If you're trying to conceal that you've done this to fail in any way. Whatever happens in the hut, Fail will not be able to see. If Fail can hear, nor will he be able to hear it. But his knowledge of you having done this rests on a stealth check. Got it. Okay. Cool. You you, you won the stealth check. Don't even... I just failed. I, no. Are you sure? What'd you get? <laughs> I mean, I have to be honest... <laughs> I did get a natural one. <laughs> okay, what's your mod, actually? For a total of 11. You still won. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fail rolled an eight, and it's, just, it's, just, it's done. Is it? Love that plus 10. All right. Now that we're in this little hut, we can talk privately. Is there anything else you can think of? Jib, perhaps? An opening strategy? Well, I'm going to try to get my bird into a flanking position. It's a little risky for the bird, but I think it's the best move tactically overall. Is the albatross in the hut with us? <laughs> I think so. I think it must nice. be. Nice. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Everett That's awkwardly great. looks over, noticing <laughs> the albatross. Yeah, there's just a kind of uncomfortably large seabird sharing this little hut with us. Ah! Ah, yes. Very That's good. Great. Well, I got all sorts of useful things I can do. I'll try and be in there fighting with you, Jib, but we'll see how things play out, and I'll try to adapt my strategy accordingly. All right. That's a good strategy. Be adaptable. Although I do have to say, Wink, I'd feel like you're probably the easiest to hit out of the three of us. So look out for you. Stay safe. I would agree. I appreciate the concern, Jib. Though, Jib, I have seen you defend... Not only yourself, but your allies very well. I think for Wink to stay close to you would be wise. Absolutely right. But I do have a final thought. If there is to be more of these machinations below, what are we to do if there are more targets than just Fell himself? Well, I don't know exactly how any of this stuff works, but when we was fighting Tragen just a minute ago, those constructs shut off once he was dead. Maybe the same principle applies. I wouldn't count on it, though. So just go for the big bad? Hope the little guys shut down? Seems a little risky. Well, then, we shall focus on whatever we deem the highest threat, and leave it at that. A couple more things out of context. Don't be afraid of hitting me with elemental damage, because I can kind of absorb some of that. Okay. Oh, yeah, and just, if you're within five feet of me, even if it's a ranged attack, I can protect you. That's what it is. Okay. Great. So yeah, stay close to me. And for real, not in like a grand kind of way where you're going to get hurt anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, what's everybody's new HP 64. Totals? Nice. 44 out of 45. Uh, yeah, I'm at 47. So I tried to guess what Jibs and Everett's would be off the new level. Because Wink, you actually said I'll be 45. I was one off. Nice. Mm. Both of you. I don't roll hit points. Oh, you don't? Got you. No, nah, I don't mess I around with that. Really? But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely fucking should. I don't know when you're when you're using D tens and D twelves. Like it's worth it. It's worth trying to go big. Like yeah, it is. I like it. Honestly, that should be Jeppy's decision. Jeppy should say, "You all roll hit points, or you all don't." True. But you do whatever you want. It's all good. I can promise you that the difficulty of this combat, if designed properly, will not rest on three hit points. I'm going to be very annoyed that I didn't do it right, or I'm going to be very worried about killing you all. I don't know. All right, let's get in the lift. All, All right. right. All right. You enter the lift. You see a pretty standard mechanical lever on the side. I assume one of you pulls it. I'll pull it. All right. Jib pulls. Wait, sorry. Did we want to cast invisibility before we exited the hut? No, because I feel like then it would be very obvious, because then he would see only Jib and I and Isaac getting on the lift. Hmm. He didn't see you go into the hut, though. Remember, he did miss that stealth check as you all entered the hut. We have no way of knowing that. That's true. Right, that's fair. You, your characters wouldn't know that. What do you guys think? We said the invisibility plan out in the room before we went in the hut, so that's fair game if Jeppy wants to be ready for that. Yeah. Also, we don't know if the camera points towards the lift or not, so that's true. I would say do it in the lift. Okay. All right. Shall I pull this lever? <laughs> 
Come on. <laughs> the quest marker is bouncing animated on this lever yeah. right now. Jib pulls the lever, the lift cranks and then shudders into life, slowly goes down and... Somewhere along the way, I cast invisibility on Everett. It's a very slow moving lift mechanism. It takes about a full minute before it slams onto the ground. Right before Wink casts invisibility, I only have a minute window for this spell, so... I'm going to cast Zephyr Strike on myself, and then Wink will cast Invisibility. Sure. Awesome. I'll say you time that right as you're starting to see light, so like right as the lift is coming down. Sounds good. And yeah, the lift goes down, and you're able to see this large chamber. This room is 60 by 60. You see on the far end of this chamber, against the wall, a large wall-to-wall desk with several what look to be similar, Wink, to the teleprompter you saw at the debate, and you can see into the accelerator room, you can see this camera footage Mm. on this device. It looks strange to you, but not super strange given that you saw that teleprompter at the debate. However, in the center of the room is Fail himself. He is armored in leathered hides. He sits at the middle of the room. Mechanically speaking, he's 30 feet into the room. Any of you could get to him when we go into initiative, which, come on, let's be real. Like, we're probably going to do that. So he is one round of movement away in the center of the room. And he just stares at the three of you (laughs) getting down from the lift, even though it's four. I am so glad to see you again. In this context, it's especially delightful knowing that you came in like small vermin, insignificant nothings, and tried to ruin the greatness I've created. And now you get to see the fruits of my restless innovation. As he starts talking, or even before the lift comes to a complete stop, Everett is going to try and stealthily jump off and get around to behind fail. Okay, I do want to make one thing really clear. There are no pillars or anything of the sort in this room. This is a big open space, Everett. There's not much to hide behind. Is there anything else in this room? What you see on the walls looks to be more of that outdated weaponry. Uh Uh-huh. And you do see two turrets up in the wall as well, on the left and right side. You, Everett, roll me perception because you're further back in the room and closer to these turrets. Great. Perception, let's say 21. Let me see. The turret on the right side of the room looks to be a little damaged, and it's actually damaged in the same location that you all hit the one in Tragen's room. So you'd be able to tell that this turret moved into this room. Neat. And then did you want me to roll stealth to try and move while they're conversing? Yeah. Okay, go for it. You're going to give it to me. I mean, you're fucking mod. Come on. Let's be real. But Yeah, 19 plus 10. (laughs) Oh, God. I I thought you were going to say 19 total. I'm like, did you just pass? He rolled an 18. Um, Okay. Yeah, no, you're good. Oh, sorry. So, Wink, you were going to say something. (laughs) Oh, you really think you're something, don't you? But nobody here wants you. So I'm going to give you one chance and one chance only. Get out of town and don't come back. When Wink says that, I'm going to draw and prepare to fire. Okay. I have no intention of leaving. This place, this quiet corner of the world is mine. I claimed it. Because you don't know where I come from, what I've had to go through to get here. 25 years ago, I came from a land so far from here, I don't think any of you have ever been there. A city like a tower. And they told me I could be nothing. I was left as nothing but an urchin. And when I found my way here, I made a vow to prove to the world that I am something great, a force to be reckoned with. This company is everything I have fought for. And when we go beyond Icewind Dale, we will take that back home and show them what I am meant to be. Wait a minute. This fucker's from Sharp. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No way. Oh. <laughs> Jeppy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I need a minute. <laughs> Some things are clicking into place now. <laughs> Wait a second. That's clever. Fuck. Fuck, I, I gotta reset so I can, like, kiss <laughs> this fool before we murder him, but... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> cool. Shit, what was the last thing, what was the last full sentence that he said? And when we go beyond Icewind Dale... We will take that back home and show them when he says what I am meant to be. Everett's gonna shoot. All right. Go ahead and shoot fail. <laughs> so are we... Oh my god, and that also explains his dumb fucking name. <laughs> How does it explain that? <laughs> are we... I don't know. It sounds like it's from Sharn. Okay. Do you want us to roll into initiative now? Is this a surprise attack? How do you want to do this? I will tell you that yes, he did not hear you scheming. This is a surprise attack. Let's go ahead and roll initiative. Fucking okay. 
Oh, I like that. 21. Hey, 23. What's your mod? Pink. Plus four. Okay, you go before fail. <laughs> Holy shit. I got a 19. 19 for the familiar. Wow. Jesus. Do you want it to go before or after me? I think it doesn't actually matter in this case because I know what it's going to do either way. It can go after you. That's fine. Okay, cool. I want to shoot. Okay, go for it. All right. As Everett drops his invisibility, you see the frost and diamond dust of the Zephyr Strike coalescing around the arrowhead as he looses. And (laughs) so because of the surprise round, it's automatically a critical hit because of Assassin Rogue. But you rolled a critical hit, too. But I also (laughs) rolled a net 20 on this attack with advantage. I rolled a 6 and a 20. Go for it. Holy shit. Let's hear this damage. This is what I built this character to do. I am rolling 4d6 and 4d8. Wow. Nice. And I get to attack a second time. Nice. One shot final <laughs> boss. You won't, but that's okay. New game plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Andy's memory loss is because Andy's actually a new game plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here I go. Okay. 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 32 points of damage. Wow. Sweet. The fail is significantly staggered. Falls to the ground, picks himself back up. It took a lot out of fail. And Everett just mutters under his breath, Then go back to where you came from. And we'll shoot again. That is going to be a 17 to hit. Just misses. Damn. Yeah, I only rolled a 6 on that. Did you say 17 or 16? 17. 6 plus 9. 17 just hits. 6 plus 9 is 15. Oh, sorry. That just misses. That's what I thought. <laughs> But through this banter, you've learned the AC of the enemy, so that's cool. Great. And looking around, I already know that hiding is virtually not an option. Correct. So then with my bonus action, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark. And that's my turn. All right. I am as far away directly behind him as I can be. Fail turns to you and breaks the arrow from his chest. Like the others, you're so eager to deny my gifts that I've given you. This place is breathing hell, and I intend to bring life back to it. Why deny me? And we will go off the surprise round and start with Jib. All right. You know, I've been asking the same kind of question. Still haven't really gotten an answer. What is it this accelerator actually does? As I'm walking menacingly towards Failbarov. <laughs> the moment... Everyone loses sight of their ability, their desire to wield magic. They will have but one place to turn. The one place I have tried to give them. The one place they deserve to turn to. Fail Barash and all of our wonderful innovations and our amazing, brilliant creations can be wielded to fight Oral, to fight everything that comes our way. And with such a repute in our wake... I will finally be viewed as the innovator that I know I am, that my homeland swore I wasn't. So it's kind of a personal thing, then. All right, well, that's not a good enough answer for me. Jib's going to attack. Then come at me if you want to be so short-sighted about it. Jib's going to miss. This is maybe the only attack I'm going to take this combat without advantage. All right, well, my first hit misses with a 10. I'm going to try again. And second one's probably going to hit on a 24. Does hit. Yep. And so that's going to be eight points of piercing damage. That's my turn. Yeah, I'm just going to position myself so I'm right up in his face. Got my shield strategically held up. All right, awesome. Wink. Okay. I'm going to give this little doodad I picked off of Tragen a try, because why not? I'm going to say to Felbarash, it doesn't matter where you get to. If you got there by stepping on other people, you're always going to be nothing. Fuck yeah. And I'll cast Tasha's hideous laughter, even though that's not very funny. <laughs> Maybe Felbarash will find it funny in his twisted mind. Felbarash would, totally. And impose disadvantage on his save. Wisdom? Wisdom save, yes. Nice. Okay, the first roll was a 19. All right, that's a 16. That's my save, DC. Okay. And how does ties work? Ties go to the defender. Oh, okay. And then bonus action. Still speaking into this device as I walk towards Jib. If you wanted people to depend on you, you should have been somebody dependable. In that right. And I'll throw a cheeky wink over to Everett for inspiration. Nice. Awesome. You do that. Wink's turn. We go to fail. I tried to be that person for everybody, and yet they didn't want it. It took me 25 years to build this empire, and not 10 years after I began my important work. They started this union business they never wanted me to begin with. They don't want anything I have to offer. Yet it is a gift 
dependable. I will show you what it's like to depend on something right now. And he will actually turn back to you, Everett. Perhaps you can depend on your friends to save you from this. And he will cast Windwall. <gasps> cool. Good stuff. <laughs> No. Good stuff. What does that look like? So the flooring is a tile pattern, and from the slits in between each tile, you notice the steam rising up and coalescing into a large cubic form all around you. Go ahead and make me a strength save. Oh, so he's just casting it on top of me? Oh, shit. Okay. (laughs) I thought he was covering himself. Fuck, this is savage. Okay, strength save. Yikes. Oh, God, this blue dice. (laughs) This blue dice, why? (laughs) It's the one that rolled the one twice already. That's a total of ten. Doesn't do it. Didn't think so. Oh, my goodness, I rolled a lot of damage. Okay, that is 20 bludgeoning damage. In addition to that, at this point, any loose objects, arrows, for example, passing out or into it have no effect. Great. (laughs) In addition to this, while he's doing this and as the steam billows up around you and he sees you taking this damage, he will just almost materialize something like a small one-handed, almost purple, but it's mechanical, arcane firearm and go ahead and add an additional four. So you take 24 total bludgeoning damage. Oof. Okay, now remind me, this Wraithosite armor I can use as a reaction to reduce that? Yes, you can. Okay, I'm going to use that to reduce it by three. Nice. Yikes, I'm hurt. (laughs) How big is this wind wall right now? It's 15 feet tall, and basically it's a foot thick as well. And in terms of its length, it covers almost the entire length of the room. The room is 60 feet. This is 50 feet. So all the way on the left is a 10 foot space where this is not covering. Got it. But I'm in it. You are in it. Everett winces as he's buffeted by this really strong steam. (laughs) Awesome. That is his turn. We go to a layer action in front of Fail. One of these tiles will shift out of place and up will spring what looks to be some sort of medium-sized, almost humanoid-sized construct. It is completely adorned in shields. Uh, Now roll that into the initiative. That is the layer action. We move from that to this construct, actually. It does not do anything for this first round. Next, we go to Everett. Okay, I think if I've got this right, I can just step forward 10 feet and be out of the wind wall. You can walk through it. Okay, Everett steals himself, walking forward out of this wind wall, will consume the healing potion as a bonus action. Mm -hmm. Cool. Healing all of four. Oof. And then we'll take his bow and fire again. Using Wink's Bardic Inspiration on the... Shit, I need advantage to get sneak attack. You don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within five feet of that enemy. You're right. However, Everett, I have some bad news for you. Okay. Because this shield guardian has appeared, uh-huh. it fervently protects Veil vale Barash and imposes disadvantage on every attack made against him so long as it is near him. Whoa. Mm. Okay. So you will roll this flat. Okay. Do you have advantage from something? From us being next to Fail Barrage, no? That doesn't give advantage. Oh, because he's not engaged, right. It allows sneak attack, but doesn't give advantage. Yeah, so I didn't have advantage. Oh, well, now you have disadvantage. (laughs) Great. So that's not good. Well, now that we've cleared that up, the first roll (laughs) was a 19 plus 9. I'm going to roll again. And that's a 19. That hits. Cool. Uh, Here we go. Okay. I carefully try and find a mark past the shield construct, and I roll for 18 piercing damage. Boom. Awesome. You hit, fail, looks hurt. Not severely hurt, though. And that's my turn. All right, that is Everett's turn. We go next to the familiar. Okay. So are these turrets on the other side of the wind wall? That's a great point. The one on the left side is not at all obscured. The one on the right side is actually positioned. You could have just done the wind wall as a circle around Fail Barrage. Fail wanted to hurt Everett. Okay. And I don't think you can make it a circle, right? You have to make it... You you can. can. Oh, you can? You can make it a ring around yourself. Okay. That's great to know. Cool. I wasn't going to tell you the whole answer to the puzzle in Table Talk, (laughs) Jeffy. It's fine. Hashtag Patreon. Hashtag Table Talk. (laughs) Yes. So it's only a one foot thick wind wall, so I would say no, the turret is not one foot up against the wall. Sorry, he would need to make a concentration check on the wind wall. Yes, he would. Yep, yep. 
It's a 14, which passes. Both turrets are beyond the threshold of the wind wall. So yeah, that's Familiar's turn. Then for this turn, the Familiar is going to swoop down, give me the help action, and then get the hell out of there with flyby, not provoking an opportunity attack. All right, cool. Awesome. Next up is the shield guardian it actually remains stagnant next to bell Barash, seemingly waiting some sort of instruction or threat to come in its area all right we go to the left side turret which will fire on you jib plus four to hit it's probably not going to hit on a 16 dink dink indeed all right we go to isaac he will charge up to the left side of Fail. Because I presume one of you is behind Fail, one of you is to the right or left side, because you're trying to get flank. We're not flanking right now. We're within five feet of each other, probably right in front of him. Yeah, but if you're directly in front of him and I'm off to one mm-hmm. side, Isaac could probably move into a flank, at least with a rogue dash to get around the backside. Sure. Okay. Isaac will do exactly that. Run and then dash furiously up towards Fail Barash to get a flank alongside Wink. You took everything from me. You killed all of my friends. Have you even heard of Lonelywood? You know nothing of your own creation. And he will go to attack with advantage. Well, flat because of the shield guardian. Because the fucking shield guardian. And what is E6 mod? Definitely on an unnatural 21 hits. But the flank still affords sneak attack, correct? Adjacency is what affords sneak Mm -hmm. attack. So he's got it? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Wow, Isaac, all about that vengeance. 23 piercing damage to Fail Barash. <laughs> yeah, Isaac, keep it up. Fail Barash looking rather hurt. Oh, good. All right, that's Isaac's turn. We go to the other turret. Concentration. Oh, yeah. This is the second monster I've ever encountered where it has to do concentration. 17 on the dice passes. I mean, for the wind wall that's doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's be real. All right, the next turret will go shifting its form around to aim towards Isaac and will hit on a natural 20. Oof. Yeah. So Isaac's flanking with Wink. So he's probably more than five feet from me, you'd say? Yeah, but probably not for long. So he's going to get hit for 14 bludgeoning damage and be pushed five feet, but not out of melee range. So there will be no AOL. All right, we go back to the top with Jib. All right, going to attack with advantage. No, you're not. I'm going to attempt to attack with advantage and... This shield guardian's probably going to intervene somehow. And it can do that all the time. That's just something the shield guardian can do. Yeah, it doesn't really do much else. All right, so here's another flat roll. At least it's not with disadvantage. 13's going to miss. Yes. So trying again. 21's going to hit, though. Fail barrage. It is. Yes, going for him. I'm going to use my new piercer feat to re-roll this 2 on the D8. Nice. Ooh. Jeez. Nice. How does piercer work? It's got a few different things that have to do with piercing damage, but right now what I'm doing is once per turn, I can re-roll one damage dice that would do piercing damage, and I have to use the new roll. Nice. Which is four for eight piercing damage. Awesome. Fail is looking quite bloody, but not on death's door. That is Jib's turn. We go to Wink. Okay. He would need another concentration check for the wind wall. That's right. He would... The wind wall remains on the 16 on the dice. This fucking wind wall. Yep. You'd be much more upset if it were doing a fucking <laughs> single thing to this party. <laughs> but yeah. Just using up his concentration. Right now it's just like annoying because like there's just steam. And it's probably getting a little hotter in here or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. And it's just that constant wind noise that I had to edit in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scala, without a perception check, you can see Fail is not wielding a weapon of any kind in case heat metal is something you might want to do again. Right. I'm going to step so that I'm opposite Isaac, but still next to Jib. I believe that should be possible based on my mental map of the room. Mm-hmm. We're forming a flying V right now with okay, Jib yes. at the apex. Got you. And I'm going to make a normal spell attack against Fail Barash. What spell? This is going to be Bestow Curse. Okay. I'm going to curse him. Does a... Oh, no. Wait, hang on. 9 plus 8 is 17, which we know... Which we know. ...to be his armor class. The AC. So that hits. So, so that hits. Curse so do? now he makes a wisdom save. It's a 20 on the dice with a 3 mod. Oh, wow. Wow. Jeffy, I've been telling you all fucking campaign. Stop saving against my spells, you piece of shit. Maybe we'll come back to Icewind Dale and there will be more shit that won't save. <laughs> Yikes. Does anything happen on a pass or no? On a pass, he's not cursed. Ooh. So it's just a uh, save negates. Damn. No damage from whatever this is, though? Nope. Anyway. 
hate to see that. I will give inspiration to Jib. I am too salty to come up with a song right now. Jeez. Thanks, Wink. It's a game played with dice. I'm sorry. All right. A moment of silence to mourn the curse. And it's back to fail. Fail looking rather hurt. You tried to curse me. Do you think something so mundane could ever fell something so innovative? <laughs> This piece of shit. Jeffy, I'm going to be innovating some new ways for you to breathe, you piece of shit. <laughs> Just channeling this so you, know, you can take it out on the next round of combat. <laughs> they will cast Shatter on you, Wink, and you, Jib. Constitution saving throws from both of you, please. Con save is an eight. I got the same. Nice. I actually add two. I got a ten. That fails. <laughs> no shit. Oh, wait. I Do I have... Uh... <laughs> Do I have proficiency? I You have a bardic inspiration if you want to use that. I do have proficiency in con saves, actually. This should be an 11. And you're right, I do have a bardic. It's just damage, yeah. though. Also, you could absorb elements. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to eat it. So he forms this spherical shape of electricity and bolts, and it's making almost this mechanical grinding sound as it gains energy and gains energy until it shatters and explodes in your area. He also, in his other hand, once again, materializing this weird purple mechanical device to augment that damage as you all take 15 Oof. thunder damage. I'm going to use absorb elements to have that. Okay, you take 7 thunder damage. So it just fully halves it. The purple shit is also halved, whatever that was doing. Yeah, because that's just adding the overall spell attack damage, basically. Got it. And it takes the form of it. So if he's doing thunder or whatever damage, it just takes that form as well. Weirdly, that's giving me, like, the Palmer Mako gun vibes. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you said Shinra shit. <laughs> yes, yeah, I never thought of that, but totally. That is Fail's turn. We go on a layer action. Let me roll a d2. Okay, out of the ground, behind Isaac, a ground turret appears and is rolled into the initiative. Let me roll that in. This turret's cannon mechanism looks a little different in shape than the ones on the wall. So you don't really know, but you do imagine that this would operate a little differently. Okay, that is in the initiative. We go next to Everett. Okay. Everett sizes up all of these little constructs that are popping up all over the place, but he's going to keep shooting, and this will be a roll of disadvantage. And you'd be able to guess that disabling this construct near him would right. remove this effect. First roll is uh, 13 plus 9. Second roll is a 21. 21 hits. 16 points of piercing damage. Damn. Okay. You lose this arrow into fail. It goes right through Fail's chest. Fail slumps to the ground, Everett, as you do this. Sputtering blood, looking extraordinarily hurt. Now let us be done with this. This <coughs> coughing up blood was exactly what I had hoped for. Shit. As he says this, the ground beneath you, Wink, and Jib starts to tremble. All those tiles shaking. I need the two of you, as well as Isaac, to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Okay. Isaac knocked it out of the park. Halfling that one. We got a nine. Oh, no. 16. All right. As this happens, you notice the shield guardian and the turrets recessing back into the floors and walls as a large 30 by 30 area of this floor opens up as if it is a drawbridge. When this happens, Wink, it flings you into the air. You fall and you just take a total of five bludgeoning damage as this happens. What is happening? Get back! And as you see this happen, Fail goes down into the ground, and the rumbling continues until you see a large 25 by 25 construct with a glimmering red gemstone in its center. You see Fail and this construct coming up from a lift mechanism as the floor settles back into place. You are at eye level basically with its legs. This thing is quite tall. This is probably a 15 foot tall construct. Fused almost inside of it is Fail Barash himself Mm. as he says through kind of a mechanical voice. This is exactly why I brought you here and why I waited for you. Damn. And I will go ahead and re-roll this wraith-adorned construct into the initiative. Take a few of these things out of the initiative. Damn, dude. Good face change. (laughs) I was nervous about that, but... All right, cool. So we left off with Everett. The construct is next, actually. It's going to start with you, Everett. Turns over to you, and it is going to use one of the turrets on its side to make a ranged attack. You see a red glimmer come from this turret as it fires at you. That is a 17 to hit. That'll hit. And this will do 
Also, if this thing is that big, then I'm probably no more than five or ten feet away from it anyways. Yeah, you are about five to ten feet from it. Okay, it rolled shitty. That is eight bludgeoning damage from this turret, but I also need you to make me a constitution save as this turret hits you. The red shimmer circling all around your body. Okay. (laughs) That's another nat one. Jeez. (laughs) Total of two. Okay. Your next turn, you are pacified as this wraith surrounds you. Oh, fuck. Wow. Okay. What is happening? What is this? It has multi-attack. It will also slam into you, Jib. Nope. Uh, I think a 16 does not hit you. Doesn't hit. I deflect it with my shield. (laughs) Easy. Just a giant fucking arm of a mechanical beast. You're just like, nah. (laughs) Check out this conch, bro. Get the fuck (laughs) out of here, Gundam. I have a conch. That's nice. right. Yes, a Nautilus <laughs> shell. <laughs> you can't break through this. Hell yeah. Amazing. No, but actually, my AC is 18, so whenever it's 16 or 17, that's the two from the shield, I consider. I like that. For sure, it's just fully the shield. That's cool. I like that you do that. That's awesome. That is this Wraith Construct's turn. Familiar. It's going to give me the help action and just try to get clear of the area of any possible area of effects as far as it can get away in the room. Awesome. Up next is Isaac, who will attack with advantage. With the shield guardian gone, all attacks are either made flatter with advantage as normal. Gotcha. Definitely going to hit on a fucking 25. Ought to do it. Adding the sneak attack, Isaac will say... It is so like you to hide behind these creations, these devices, these evil things. Come back and face us. And he will deal 23 piercing damage again. Nice. However, as he does it, he notices that he's not able to fully deal that damage as this thing is metallic in nature. Good to know. And that is Isaac's turn. We go back to the gauntlet of our heroes at the top of the order, starting with Jib. Okay, I want to take inventory here. Is the wind wall gone? I treat fail as a different entity in this combat. The wind wall is gone. Gotcha. And what is pacifying Everett? That ranged cannon shot seemed to be imbued with Wraithosite energy, which pacified Everett. Okay. Do I see any weak spots on this thing? Anything I can identify as a weak spot? Maybe some type of glowing crystal or (laughs) something that looks like a beating heart, perhaps? You can roll perception. You do prey on my love of video games. (laughs) Something I can target other than just Failbra. That's only an 11. I'll remind you what you see. You see Failbrosh, again, is almost fused to this device. It's yeah. not like he's piloting it. It's almost like he's become a part of it. The cannons, again, have this glowing red, and then imbued in the middle of it is clustered together Wraith of Sight. All right. I don't know if it makes a big difference, but I want to aim for the Wraith of Sight. Go for it. And I'm going to attack with advantage on account of the bird stuff. I'm going to re-roll one of these on account of elven accuracy. And I'm um, probably still going to miss with a 16 to hit. 16 misses. Yeah, that was real bad. Yikes. All right, second attack. Flat roll. Oh, it's definitely going to miss. It's lower. I'm fucking math. <laughs> <laughs> it's lower. It misses. 15 to hit. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, turns out misses. God damn. Shouldn't both attacks have advantage? No, help action is only for one attack. It's for the next attack. Oh, you're taking from health, not flanking. That's right. Oh, but I am flanking with Isaac, though, right? I would say at this point, yeah, flanks are absolutely happening. And I'll say this as well. If not, you would also be able to walk around without provoking an AOO to just get on the other side of every. All right, then I'm going to roll one more d20 and just hope for the best here. Fucking hell. All four of those were single digits. This is now a 16 to hit. Was that nine was the highest on all those dice? Yeah, it misses. Oh my god. Yikes. At a certain point, it like stops even being funny. It's just like I want to hit an enemy sometimes. It becomes (laughs) concerning. And now I lose that absorb elements. Unless I. I can action action surge. surge. I should action surge. I should just do it now. I'm going to action surge. Yes. Unless we think there's a phase three. (laughs) Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Unless I feel like I'm going to miss two more attacks. There's no way this is the Bizarro Sephiroth. There's no way. I rolled another nine, but also I rolled a crit. Hell yes! yeah! My second one this campaign. Oh, so. nice. There we oh. go. You still have the Bardic Inspiration if you'd like to add 2d8. Do it! I totally forgot about the Bardic. I could have added it to any one of those attacks. So, there's also a thing with Piercer here. When I score a critical hit that deals piercing damage, I can roll one additional damage die. Yes! Do all the dandies. All right. So it would normally be 2d8. I'm going to have another one for the piercer feet. And I might as well add this bardic right now. So double the bardics. 5d8 plus 4. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to get him. Get him. Okay. There's two ones here. I'm going to re-roll one of them. <laughs> 
But now it's an eight. Nice. All right. So this is actually a very good roll now. I've got a six, seven, and an eight. That's 30 piercing damage. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, plus uh, D6 of thunder. Plus one thunder. Two D6 of thunder. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was going to be one. Plus four thunder damage. So 30 piercing, four thunder. Okay, cool. As that happens, the piercing damage doesn't seem to take a full effect, even as you stab into this wraithocyte. Mm-hmm. However, you do notice that the wraithocyte at its core starts to chip a little bit right. as you wail into it. Right. And the thunder damage seemingly taking full effect. Great. I got one more attack. Ooh, and that's a 25 to hit. Fucking nice. Here's just a normal attack. Six more piercing damage. Again, not taking a great effect. Jib's not apologizing here. No. Oh, not sorry for that damage. Who would be? That's beautiful. I mean, that was 30% of what it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you use so much of your kit to get there, and other people's kit. But you know, oh, it's fine. It. Amazing. All right, wink. Okay, clarifying question: This anime ass mech suit counts as a suit of armor for the purposes of heat metal? So it will count like we talked about in our last session, wherein if you cast heat metal, it may over time have some of its weaponry be less effective. Probably that turret specifically. But I can cast heat metal on it. You can. Okay, cool. That's the primary question. So I'm going to do that at third level. And there's no save. It's just the damage, right? There's a save. It's a con save or drop the object. I feel like it'd be hard to force fail to drop the Gundam that he's wearing. (laughs) Yeah. What may happen is that if you focus it on the turret, maybe over time something may happen to the turret specifically, but anything with the entirety of this form wouldn't be degraded over time. I'm just going to heat the suit of armor itself. Cool. So that is 12 fire damage. Awesome. It seems to take full effect. Great. I haven't given inspiration to Isaac yet. Hey, Isaac, want to guess for me what temperature rate site melts at? I would have no idea. Perhaps you could show me. Awesome. That is Wink's turn. We move to Everett. Please clarify what I can do. Let me double check what pacification is. Other 5e pacifies we've had, I think it's just I can't do a harmful action. You can't take the attack action or cast offensive spells, so spells that deal damage or force a saving throw. What gives Um, pacify? I don't see that as like a, it's not a condition. That was a condition I made up. Right. I I invented that bullshit. It's kind of like charm then, right? Because it's a 3-5 thing. It's not a 3-5 thing. It's not? It's a Magic the Gathering thing that I tried to translate to Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Okay, great. So yeah, you just can't do anything harmful, basically. Okay. In that case, staring up at this mechanical monstrosity, I will use my action to activate my nether sand on my longbow, and I will use my bonus action to use my last spell slot to cast Zephyr Strike on myself. Just readying up for the big dammies later, huh? That's right. There you go. That's the plan. Am I in melee range with it right now? Did you say I was five feet away? Yeah, five feet is fine. After I do that, I'm going to back away to try and put a little more distance between me and this thing. And that's my turn. Would that provoke an AOO or no? Zephyr Strike, you don't provoke opportunity attacks anyway. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I back up. That's my turn. Awesome. All right. Everett's turn familiar. Okay. Not too much this bird can do right now. Bird's going to take the dodge action. Go ahead. Try to get out of the way of turrets or whatever. That's great timing because the construct is next. And the construct will actually point at you, Jib. And this time, both of its turrets will center in on you. A loud whirring sound happens. And I need you to make a deck save. Uh oh. Not too good at those. It's only a nine. Okay. That's a fail, unfortunately. Sure. Okay. It's pretty high. It's pretty hot. As these two turrets centered on you, this whirring occurs. A hail of these bullet things adorned with some of that purple energy coming from that arcane firearm that Fail was wielding before lob into you as you take 26 bludgeoning damage. Whoa. Oh, I man. lean back like Neo in the Matrix, but every bullet hits me anyway. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ooh. God. Normally it has multi-attack, but you notice that this took quite a bit of machine power from this, so that is the end of the Construct's turn. And we move to Isaac, who will slink around, taunting. Again, you are too cowardly to come out. Bashing the side of the Construct as he circles around, getting himself in position to try and hit that Wraithocyte at its core again. And will attack with advantage. 
Nope, three and a two on the dice doesn't do it. Oof. Oof. He's so concerned with the theatrics that he lifts the attack, and we go back to the top with Jib. All right, I keep trying to look for something to do other than just attacking, but I think I'm just going to attack. Fighter's going to fight. Fighter's going to fight. Aiming for the Wraithosite again? Yeah, if that seemed like it was going to do something. The seeming resistance didn't change, but again, a crack formed in the Wraithosite. Is there any part of this whole apparatus that looks maybe a little bit more open to being damaged by piercing damage? Again, Bale is fused into this thing. There isn't really a glass encasement or anything that seems more fragile. So there's no way I can actually hit him, like his flesh? Fail basically is part of this construct now. Got it. All right. Just gonna smack it then with my pointy sword. That'll do it. That's uh, 24 to hit. Yeah, 24. That's eight piercing damage. Okay. And I'm gonna attack again. <sighs> bad, 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 bad. Oh, that's another crit. Nice. Ooh. Elven nice. accuracy. Hold on a second. Is it any time I have advantage or just once per turn? Let me check. Whenever you have advantage on an attack roll, you can re-roll one of the dice once. Fucking broken. It's great. Pretty fucking good. Yeah, that is pretty fucking good. All right. Gonna re-roll that. All right. That is 16 more piercing damage. Rerolling all over the place. I need it. Awesome. You see another much larger crack form into this Wraithosite core as we move on from your turn and go back to Wink. Okay. Bonus action. I continue trying to turn the Ava into orange soda. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. So that's going to be 12 more fire damage. Okay. And I will, at this point, draw my sword and just start swinging on this thing. I attack the robot with my rusty pitchfork sword. <laughs> <laughs> they ruin everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking insane. So Jib is flanking with Isaac, so I don't have anywhere to flank. No? Everett backed away, so no flanking there. Yeah, I'm, I backed away. Right, no flanking. Yeah, okay. Okay. I weighed that in my decision, but I don't want to get hit by this thing in melee. That's fine. So these are just going to be flat. A 12 don't hit. It doesn't hit. Yeah. And, oh boy, let's see. A 13 don't hit. No. Oh. No, 13 doesn't hit. Damn it. Okay, the well. Giant mechanical construct. Yeah, that's about what you'd expect when I swing my rusty pitchfork <laughs> at the it's, mecha. It's about realism. We're all about realism here. Right? Yeah, totally. I remain next to Jib. Good. So in the spirit of realism, we'll move on to the reborn ranger, Everett. Yep, you got it. Uh, I'm going to shoot him. Okay. With advantage, that is a 19 plus 9. Technically plus 10 because of the nether sand. Anyways, 16 points of piercing damage and 5 points of force damage. Okay, awesome. The force damage seems to be fully effective. Great. As my bonus action, I'm out of spell slots. Dungeon Master. (laughs) This is the part where (laughs) podcast is limited art form because your (laughs) evil hand twirling speaks volumes as to what you might (laughs) be about to ask. This is a giant mech suit. Do you want to get in it? Would I be able to hide (laughs) behind it? Sure, you can try and hide. I mean, I'm just grasping at whatever I can here. Yeah, you can try. I'm going to say this because it's huge. Everything is noisy. You may bump into it. I'm going to give you disadvantage for this. You're trying to hide on this thing. Okay, that's fair. That seems eminently fair to me. It'd be like going behind Jib and being like, I bet Jib can't see me. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't we do that in Theros with Gron and Clicks? (laughs) You did. You did. You did. You did. I mean, I have a thing in my racial abilities that explicitly allows me to do that. Yeah, so this is fair. That's because I'm (laughs) out Either way, I'm DMing and posing disadvantage on this one. Here we go. Oh my god! Not one again? No! You got two nat 20s. Two nat 20s! <laughs> oh, you've got to be I'm joking. not kidding! <laughs> nice. All right, you hide. The construct rolled high, but... Plus 10! Yeah, I know. I know what it is. <laughs> the construct rolled a 19, but you're hidden. Where'd Everett go? Okay, that's Everett's turn. All right. So you are tucked away behind one of its large mechanical legs. Or you go to the familiar. You know what? Now's the time. The familiar's going to flank with Wink. Nice. The familiar, in harmony with you, moves around in such a way where it may or may not distract this construct serendipitously around the time Wink goes ready and attack. That is its turn. And we go to the construct. Andy, you picked a perfect time to hide near its legs as it begins to furiously stomp everyone Great. in the 20-foot radius around it needs to make me a deck save. The familiar would be weaving in and around this. It can also make a deck save with advantage. Alright, that is a 
17 for Jib. 23. Jeez, that's not good. 11. And only a 6 for the familiar. With advantage, only a 6? Oh, with advantage, it's an 18. Everett and Jib pass, you will take half. 16 plus 1 damage. We'll also take full 16. Familiar, gone. Familiar passed, but also half of 16 is gonna fucking wipe it out. <laughs> it's more than one, right? <laughs> The familiar disappears in a burst of spectral blues, greens, and purples. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Gotta spend an hour and ten gold to bring that back. Okay, not 20 on my concentration check, at least. Nice. It does the stop, and then it immediately, after getting taunted by Ezek, it will position one of those turrets at Ezek. Probably positioned too quick on a nat one definitely misses Ezek, and that is the construct's turn. We go to Ezek, who will follow it up with an attack with advantage. Definitely hits on a 24. Doing 11 piercing damage to this construct. Again, does not seem to be super effective. The Wraithocyte in its center, however, seems to have veins and cracks all over it at this point. The construct in and of itself, however, looking decent. A little bit of scuffing around its sides. Some smoke billowing out from that fire damage, but overall looking decent. That is Ezek's turn. Back to the top with Jib. All right. Attacking. Pretty upset about this bird, but still flanking with Ezek. And 17 to hit. Just hits. 12 piercing damage. Andy writes down 17 and circles it in red marker. <laughs> In his notebook. <laughs> By the way, if anybody could see Everett right now, they would see him covered in blood stains and bruises. He is very hurt. Mm. Nobody can see him. Now. <laughs> and that is one more attack here. All right, that'll do it. That's twenty-one to hit, and I'm not going to reroll this five. That's nine more piercing damage. All right, that is Jib's turn. We move to Wink. Okay, bonus action. Continue the heat. That's 14 more fire damage. A good amount of smoke billowing all around this construct now, as that fire damage takes full effect. Great. I think I need to heal myself a little based on where I'm at. So I'm going to just cast a second level Cure Wounds on myself instead of making any attacks this turn. Great. I heal for 10. Glad I upcast that to get a number that I could have gotten on 1d8. Yikes. You doing okay over there, Wink? Ah! I tell you, I had better days, but I'm sure that's true for all of us. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> that unimpeachably amazing, adorable Wink laughter. Jib's looking a little hurt, too, but not dire. Okay. That's your full turn, right, Wink? Yep, I stay next to Jib to be under his protection. Awesome. Everett. Okay. Would there be any way for me to tell if it looks like this construct is simply resistant to non-magical damage or specifically bludgeoning, slashing, or piercing damage from non-magical weapons. As Everett considers drawing his magic frost great axe and wailing into this thing. Roll Arcana for me. You got it. Great. <laughs> this dice is being thrown across the room. That's another nat one. And <laughs> that is a total of five. Out of five, you have no idea and you cannot be confident. All you Great. know is that steel on steel seems to not work very well. You cannot tell if magic augmentation of any sort will mitigate the fact that it is steel on steel. Okay. Everett will come out of hiding and shoot it with his longbow. Pretty good at that, though. Okay. Why change it this late in the game, you know? Well, I thought it would have been cool and it would have been with a magical weapon, so maybe it would have helped. Yeah. That is a 23. And not great rolls, but that is... 14 piercing damage. Okay, cool. Awesome. You do that. Bonus action, I'm going to try and hide again. Okay. A stealth with disadvantage. I threw the blue dice across the room, so with disadvantage, that is... That is your disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's a 14 total. Tie goes to whoever has the higher mod, so that's you. Okay. That's one way to settle it. I would say you see him. Is that normal or no? For perception checks, Ty goes to the seeker. Oh, okay. You're not hidden. <laughs> okay. It's the final fight. I'm going to choose the more punishing option every fucking time. That's so. fine. That's fine. Shit. Bloodstained, Everett looks up at this thing as it stares back down at him. All right. Familiar. Familiar's dead. Familiar is hella dead. I forgot about that. Okay. We're back to the construct as it points its turret at you, Wink. Okay. 
And a 15 doesn't hit you. 15 is my AC unless Jib has something to say about it. Hey, hey, that's a great idea. Roll it with disadvantage, Jeppy. That's my reaction. Nice. It was actually the same roll. Shit. Fuck off. Yes. Fucking. It hits. <laughs> wow. Damn. Sorry. Gotta get one last fuck <laughs> off in there. And now I don't have a reaction. <laughs> I feel like fuck off was like really Ravnica. Like we said fuck off to each other so much during Ravnica. Mm. This was more an overt fuck, fuck you. you. Oh, excuse saving. me. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Let me get a fuck you in there. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off was everyone yeah. to everyone during Ravnica, and fuck you was just you to me <laughs> almost every episode. Every episode with combat. <laughs> or specifically, fuck Illipel. Yeah. By the way, fuck Illipel. Yeah, fuck Illipel. Fuck Illipel is every season from now on. Okay, it will deal. It's not that much, actually. Five bludgeoning damage to you, but make a con save. Con save. 21. Nice. Okay. You are not pacified. Cool. Fuck. Your heat metal dissipates, doesn't it? The good old halfling that one again. You get a lot of halfling that once. Damn. The dice do like twos over here. Heat metal goes away. Okay. And it will then point at you, Everett. It is going to lob its arm at you and try to just swipe and slam into you. And let's see how it does. I would go ahead and guess that a 25 hits you. Yeah. That is max damage of 13 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Okay. You see Everett get slammed by this, and it looks like he's going to go down, but he has, with the last ounce of his undead strength, remained standing at one hit point. Ooh. Yikes. Okay. When I get knocked unconscious, I have another reborn feature that I've literally never used all game, so that's okay. Oh, that's cool. It's fine. I know who I'm targeting next turn. No, I'm just kidding. Go for it. All right, that's Ezek's turn up next. Ezek's going to do more of the same. Okay, yeah, this time we'll hit. Sweet. On a fucking 26. Ezek dealing 10 piercing damage again, not taking a ton of effect. However, the ray the sight at the center does crumble and shatter at this point. Good show, Ezek. Keep it up. Thank you, my friend. We are in this together. There we are. Wink. Power. Not people. That is Ezek's turn back to the top with Jim. Yar. I'm gonna... Ooh, that's good. That's a 26 to hit. Yeah. Or I'm gonna reroll that. And it's the same roll, so that sucks. That's six piercing damage. Attacking again. And that is 24 to hit. For another eight piercing damage. And I'm gonna use my bonus action to second wind. Nice. Good stuff. You see smoke billowing all around the form of this construct. There's bolts of electricity frizzing from some of its sockets and joints all around it. We go to wink. Gonna make some attacks, I think. Okay, uh, 25 hits, yes? Indeed it does. Okay, cool. So that's gonna be 11 piercing damage. Okay. And then the extra attack, same 25 to hit. Nice. Hits. Let's go. Okay. And that's eight piercing damage. Do more damage than the fighter that turn. <laughs> that's good. Hey, Valor Bard can fake being a fighter sometimes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wink, tell us a tale. Yes! Of how Fail Barash came to fall in Icewind Dale. Oh, yeah! Let's go! Fucking, fucking A! Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I gotta be a little silly on this. I nimbly jump up the side of this mecha right to the Graithosite core where Fail is fused into this thing. I pull back my sword, I stab once, the last bits of Graithosite around him chip away, I pull back again, you yeed your last haul! And I stab him right in the heart. Yes. 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 He did yee his last haul, indeed. And I pull my sword out, and I ride the mecha down as it collapses to the floor of this room. Waving your cowboy hat. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. And with that, we exit initiative. Fail Barash and his construct laid to waste on the floor. <sighs> well done. Oof. Is it over? I think it is, my friends. It would appear. I hope so. I've waited so long for this moment to look upon him. Vengeance is not what I thought it would be, but we are better off for this having happened. Thank you. He says to you, Wink. You found the strength to do this yourself. You ain't gotta thank me. Everett, you look hurt. Come on over here. I got a little more power in me. Everett just falls, doesn't even move, falls to his knees in place. <laughs> 
You're at nine hit points now. Hang on, you're at ten, because I heal you for nine. <sighs> Thank you, my friend. Need one of these here health potions? I think I'm all right to keep going for a little bit, as long as there's no one else comes around looking to start trouble for us. The ground shakes underneath. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're done. <laughs> Everett stands up after Wink heals him. I would like to see if there's anything on this hunk of junk yes. worth Please, looking at. Please roll me an issue. <laughs> 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 okay. Guess I'll die. No. <laughs> Better fucking not. <laughs> well, we're specifically looking for a key of some kind. Yeah. Roll me investigation. And since you know what you're looking for, y'all can roll it with advantage. I rolled a one and a two. <laughs> Jimmy! A <laughs> uh, 17. I also got a 17. Just because we're at the end of the road here, Jeppy, before you tell us what we see, I'm going to go ahead and invoke a knowledge of the past life. And I got a six, so that's a 23. All right, awesome. On the body, you only do find this key. It looks to be actually a very traditional key, but it is completely emblazoned in shimmering red, likely made from Wraithesite itself. How symbolic. On that good of an investigation, though, at the desk area, Everett, you find something of a journal that you may have time to read over time, but it talks a little bit about Fail's past and how he came to be in Icewind Dale and a little bit more about where Fail came from. You glimpse through it quickly. You know that it has a little bit of information about his past, but mostly it's like him touting about his own virtues and what he means to Icewind Dale. And it's like a self-glorified treatise almost. I will hand the journal to Wink. These words, I feel full on deathless ears, perhaps they will be of some use to you. Maybe. Perhaps you can take it back to your lords of Red Rock and show them what, if left to their own devices, source of trouble they will wind up in. (laughs) Ah, people like this, looking at the journal, they don't listen to sense. They think that they're above it. I snap it shut and store it, but maybe Simon and Roman and them will find some use for it. They seem to care about that sort of thing, what Fail was planning and whatnot. Very well. Otherwise, there's nothing in this room. Can I look at this robot? Are any of the parts of it still intact, even though we've fucked it up? I'd say it crumbled apart. Presumably, if you let your crew know, they could maybe come down here and try to repurpose it, but... No, Jeppy's not going to give us a gun. (laughs) You're not getting a Gatling gun, but roll in sight. (laughs) That's only a 10. Okay. Even on a 10, you'd tell that aside from Fail Barash and maybe a few workers, disparately. The information and the knowledge and the artificery of what made Fail Barash maybe didn't entirely live and die with him, but a lot of it existed in Fail Barash's mind. Mm. So repurposing this outside of the people that he had directly under him might be very difficult. This stuff is alien to most people here. It's a way of their life, but leveraging it on their own without Fail Barash may be difficult, especially these hidden secret weapons that he had. I expect at some point over the next weeks and months, they'll probably pick this whole building apart. wonder where else they'll find. You have the key. So the key goes to the thing upstairs. Hope that lift still works. I guess we get back on the lift. Our mission is not over. You go back on the lift. Isaac joins you and you are in front of this encasement key in hand with the accelerator. You presumably put the key in and the encasement opens. And again, the accelerator, not a huge device. Any of you could be able to grab it with both hands and pull it out and do what you will with it. What are we seeing? What does it look like? It's a small, almost pentagonal-shaped, mechanical-looking device that would fit into both your hands. Okay. Wink, you're usually pretty proficient with magical-type stuff. I know this is different than any other type of thing, but you want to take a crack at this? Well, I can take a look at it. That's only a 10. Arcana. Yeah. This thing is pretty alien to you. Allow me. Go ahead, Everett. Dirty 20. Cool. I mean, even on a dirty 20, you can't tell how this device works. Right. Or in what way it's leveraging the Ravisite or magic. You know what Fail Barash told you, what Tragen revealed, what your compatriots guessed from the blueprints. Mm-hmm. But holding it in your hands, manipulating it, you could tell that this is a fragile device. You could destroy it right here and now if you wanted to. Perhaps we should simply destroy it. No? So what? Step on it? I look down to Wink as I am holding it in both hands. Wink, since I have known you, you have been truly and honestly wise. Can you think of any reason at all as to why this device should not be destroyed? I mean, I've never seen technology like all of this stuff up here in all my days. Tools is just tools. There's no reason that something like this can't be a 
tool that's useful, but from what I know about it, and I don't know much, it doesn't seem like it's something that's designed to be useful. So, you know, maybe the core principles, what was used to make this thing, could be useful, but I don't think the thing in and of itself is of any use. Might as well smash it. Well said. I gently place it on the ground. I take out the great axe. Hell yeah. I take out the second great axe and hand it to Jib. Together, friend. I give Everett a nod. And we smash the device. Hell yeah. Awesome. I love that. You do it. Okay, good. He's a... <laughs> yeah, you, you do that. There's no roll. I missed three times before I'm able to actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac looks down and says, This is one of the most important things I have ever done. I feel at peace. Shall we go? All right, let's go. You know, I have half a mind to steal everything from this place, but I find myself not feeling the need to. It's strange. I have to get used to it. And he starts walking. I feel like that's a DM prompt that we could go find a vault full of gold in his fucking top floor. (laughs) It's not. No, you're not getting a vault full of fucking gold. I'm guiding you to the end of this fucking story. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, usually there's loot at the end of these here dungeons. Jimmy, insert the Final Fantasy VII battle success music okay. when the gold is counting for all of you. Well, I mean, we just destroyed the loot. It was a very powerful weapon. <laughs> you just destroyed the loot. We're subverting yeah. expectations. Do, 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 da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You go back to the top. People are still scrambling around, but less so. It's been a good amount of time since you've been down there. You're able to easily locate Simon... Roman and Tash, actually. And outside, you also see Markham seeming to help people as well. And when I say outside, I mean outside into the foyer area. But inside this room, you see Tash, Roman, and Simon trying to help people along a little bit and keep things relatively calm. But you're able to gather them up and say whatever you'd like to them. It's done. It's done. It's done. He's gone? Felborash is no more. Simon smiles, a look of relief on his face. And what of this device? That's no more as well. Roman, I'm so used to things not working out. This feels incorrect, almost. Roman just looks shocked, but relieved. We owe you everything. I think we should try to get the attention of the people. Maybe later. Let them get it out of their system, if you know what I mean. Everything they was building up, all that resentment. Let them have this, I think. Tash looks around, and she just starts laughing. You know they're right. It's funny, I speak with these people all the time, and they need this. Give them their relief later. It'll come. But right now, that anger. Roman, they need this. Very well. Then why don't we walk away from this place? Let them tear it down. We figure out what comes next. But for now, let us enjoy this delightful chaos, huh? Who's up for a drink? You know, the first time I met you, I turned down your offer. I think it is time I take you up on it. He says to you, Wink. And you all walk out of Fail Barrage Incorporated as dozens, maybe almost a hundred furious, resentful, righteous, angry, amazing people tear it down. Three of you, after celebrating with Tash and Roman and Simon, got a little drunk as we know Wink, at least Wink and Jib do, and you had a hell of a time talking about how it all went down. What did Everett do? I'm not going to tell you what you did, Everett, because you're a bit more of a loner. What did Everett do? I think unbegrudgingly Everett actually drinks as well is immune to poison (laughs) so can't get drunk love it but tries to at least in this moment enjoy the moment awesome so this already all happened but again you through all of that drinking you all for the first time not so focused on all this problem solving were able to strip yourselves of your social defenses and enjoy yourselves with these people and you agreed to come back and chat with them a few days later A few days later, you're back at this office, and they're just cluing you in as to what's going on in that time. All this heroic business, I forgot we were still in fucking Icewind Dale. (laughs) Well, friend, you are, but Icewind Dale may be changing. To be honest with you, we were quite surprised. Markham agreed that, for now, Roman can play the role of interim speaker, but... There is no rush for a formal election, and thus, we are wondering if maybe a speaker is a thing of the past. Roman will kick in. We'll try to get there, but for now, the militia just can't seem to grow up and act on its own. But there is hope. People like Markham are, well, they're getting old, in more ways than one. A woman named Cyril came to me recently to speak about how she may be able to serve Roman. We see the tides are changing here in Icewind Dale. So, Jib, fucking Icewind Dale aside, Icewind Dale may be a different place soon enough. 
Everett, I thought it important to tell you that Dena and Kessa have made it to Bremen safely. I suspect we do not hear much from them, though, based on what I last heard from Kessa. But Wink, you may be glad to hear this. Tash will step in. We're trying to make unions a thing of the past. Because now, the people know what they want. They know what they're worth. And they fight for it every day. But more importantly, without Fail Baroche, we are back to a place where we just produce enough to live and be content and be happy. But, Wink, I've been working on something. Taking this operation a little bit further. I think there's a lot more good we can do for more people. What do you mean? I mean, Jib told me that these unions was a good thing for people who's working. You got some other sort of structure you're thinking of putting together? I'd like to speak with you soon about that. There's still more to do on my end, but I'll be in touch about structure in particular. I don't like the sound of that. Fucking Icewind Dale. I give Jib a serious look about that. I definitely don't trust it. Jib is not hiding anything on his face. His brow is extremely furrowed. She sees that. That scrutiny is exactly what I'm looking for. Whatever we do next is worker first, always. I need people like you, Wink, to keep me honest. Well, that's right, humbling. I'm happy to talk with you about it, but I ain't gonna pretend like I'm some sort of authority. This is your home. Y'all know how to live in the way that hopefully is best for you. If y'all don't know how to treat each other right, that ain't something I can teach you, but wherever I go, I just try to do right by people, so if you think you need my help, I'll help you. It's like such a wholesome thing to say. She's got to say something equally as wholesome, and it's like impossible. There's a phrase I learned recently. You're good people, Wink. And then lastly, Roman will stand up. It's wild to think that after so many years, decades even, a place was so cold that it refused to change. Then you three outsiders come in, and in spite of it all, here we are. Fail barrage, gone forever. That accelerator, destroyed. It's been a few days, but Oral is calm. But more important than any of that, he looks to Tash. The people are beginning to realize their worth. People like Tash and I may become unnecessary. And I can think of no better reward than that. We owe you so much. Perhaps, though, before we get into any of those details of what we owe you. He looks over to the corner of the room and you see a pile of tools. Would you mind picking up any of those and helping us out for just a little bit longer? Jib gives a heavy sigh, rolls his eyes. Sure thing. What is it you need us to do? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Winker Everett, if any of you also want to respond to that. Oh, that was perfect. I don't think we need anything more than that. Well, it's a perfect balance of like, this sucks, but we're good people, damn it. Yeah. All right, we cut to two weeks later. Everett, you are just outside Bryn Shander. You sit alone in the snow, looking out into the distance. A campfire right in front of you. You've made so many before. This one, no different. What are you thinking about in this moment? I am staring out into the distance, thinking about what I am going to say to Denna. Because Everett has taken Kessa's words, the last thing she said to him, and has been letting them fester in his mind. This notion of what his people were doing before he died. And in the days and weeks after our business with Oral and Felbrosh have concluded, this has been eating at him in a very similar way as his original quest for his answers have. As you ponder this and consider your next moves, staring out into that open wild of Icewind Dale. You hear footfalls, soft, not cautious, not trying to take you by surprise. And through the mist, you see a familiar face and hear a familiar voice. You don't see many campfires out here. I presume this would be you. Always alone, Everett. And it's Simon. Consider old habits hard to break. To what do I owe this visit? May I sit in the snow with you a moment? It has been too long. Everett doesn't really respond so much as a shrug. He sits down in front of the fire. I know this journey, it took a toll on you, physically and otherwise. In ways it did not do for your friends. Icewind Dale does owe you everything, but that price was deep, I understand. Something tells me, though, that this journey, it gave you answers, but more questions came and you thirst for more knowledge, more than ever before. Am I correct, friend? You are insightful. With Roman in this interim speakership, my hope is that we can put more efforts towards understanding Oro. I cannot begin to understand everything about your past, my friend. And I know it doesn't begin with her, but there is a big, 
black space in the middle of your story, and she sits at its center. I can think of no one better to help me than you. Take your leave, go on your travels, but know that there is a place for you here with us, working to understand Oro, and maybe even understand yourself. Everett looks into this bonfire, considers these words for a moment, stands up, looks back towards Bryn Shander. Whatever I was after before, you must understand that it was dark enough as this black space, such that you have said, to consume entire lives, innocence, in wicked, unwanted destruction. You must understand the lens, the view in which I see this ice goddess is far graver than you could ever imagine. I will find my answers, for I truly believe it may be the only thing that keeps me going. That's and of course the two friends I must go find to say goodbye before I depart. And Everett walks into Bryn Chandler. He doesn't follow you. He lets you take your distance and says as you walk away, May the light find you, my friend. May the light find you. And we go now to Wink. Wink, I believe you are at the North Look. All right. I think you might be on stage, sitting on a chair, strumming the banjo. You singing a song? Are you in between songs? You talking to someone? What are you thinking about? What's going on with Wink right now besides sitting in that chair, strumming that banjo? Now we done told you this warning, so you best be gone by morning. We'll find what kind of cold-hearted bastards we are. I know y'all heard that one before, but I know you like it. The crowd cheers and whoops and claps, and they they love it. Ooh. They love that story. They know where it comes from, and they know that crew. I'm going to be getting myself a drink. Any one of y'all want to get it for me? <laughs> and I go over to the bar. Awesome. A few people follow suit and start to try to get the attention of the barkeep. As you sit down and you enjoy your first and what looks to be a line of like five <laughs> drinks already bought for you. Lovely. Good to see you again, friends. Tash says she's behind you. Oh, had it, Tash. Here, I got more of these than I can handle myself. I got to play another song after this. <laughs> I hand her one of the drinks someone has bought for me. From what they tell me, enough of these and you're actually doing much better on stage, but <laughs> I wouldn't know. Why, I never. <laughs> <laughs> you should try it sometime. I uh, trust this is some sort of business affair? To be clear, Wink, I will be staying for your whole set and listening, regardless of what you say. All right. But I'm afraid you are right. Listen, I'm sorry I wasn't forthcoming, but I couldn't be until I knew this deal was set in stone. We've just signed on to extend our operations all the way down the Sword Coast. We'll be expanding our union greatly, helping people throughout all of Faerun. I told you I want to keep you honest, and I meant it. I'd like to bring you on, paid, but I know it's not about the money for you. You'd work right by my side. This has never been about what this company can do for me. It's been about what we can do for people. I want to run this with you together. Let me get this straight now. It's not quite clear in my head, so why don't y'all explain exactly to me your plan for expansion? We've just signed a deal with 20 companies down the Sword Coast. All different industries. We're not consolidated anymore like Fail Baroche. Never again. These mistakes I made, Wink, because I was naive. I got this position because I simply existed. I just happened to be the next warm body in a chair. I wasn't meant to run anything. I didn't know any better. I made mistakes. And then seeing those people tear down Fail Baroche, it just snapped all back into place, yeah? We can't screw this up. Because if we do, people get hurt. But also if we do, we lose our credibility. People don't believe in something like a union or whatever we want to call it. I think we can do much better. But I don't think I can do that alone. Wink sort of scratches their head a bit. Well, I don't know a better word for it. We ain't had nothing like a union back home. I don't know how these other sort of companies operate or what any of these contracts are going to mean, but if y'all need someone to get people riled up, people ready to take what belonged to them, when I'm the person to call, I'll do what I can, like I said. And I think coordinating with you on this sort of whatever we want to call this endeavor might be a good way to get people to know what they deserve. Some places further down the coast, they still got the lords looking over them. Something like this sends a message, I think. I think we'll do great work together, Wink. I think we'll do great work together. 
She starts excitedly rambling off a lot of her ideas to you. She's going a mile a minute. Maybe people partly own the company. She's just going off of all these ideas. But before you can even start to respond, everyone in the North Look starts chanting, Wink the Red Bandit! Wink the Red Bandit! Wink the Red Bandit! Wink the Red Bandit! And we cut to East Haven at the docks with Jib. Jib, you are standing outside on the docks looking at the U-Bow ship. It's a little scuffed, but mostly intact. You all did a really great job. And you're speaking with Laz. I mean, is there anything else you want to know about these ships? You're going to be on it a little bit more, I think. No, I think you pretty much covered most of what I needed to know. Who do you want at the nest? At the nest? Hmm. Is Jory still around? You heard from Jory? I think we can get Jory. You like working with him? I did like Jory. And it would be quite pleasant. I mean, I think Jory doesn't know his ass from his elbow sometimes when we were on that river run, but Jory's all right. Well, that's a pretty strong sentiment there. I thought Jory was delightful. Good asset to the crew. It's your call, buddy. It is my call. Thanks. And it'll be Captain. Uh, awesome. As you say this, you hear, oh, fuck, there aren't horses in this <laughs> world. There are bears. Never mind. There can be horses. <laughs> You see a barrage, but might be the last one we hear about on this podcast for a little bit. Uh, every time a barrage comes around the corner, I think it's just bears attacking. It scares the hell out of me. <laughs> and out steps Markham Southwell, the head of the militia. Hail Markham. He comes up. It's Jib, right? I think we met the once. That's right. Yeah, Roman told me to find you here with this U-Bow ship. I'm glad you hadn't set sail just yet. Listen, we're working on something up in Bryn Shander. A little bit of a closer trade route with East Haven, but part of that, we're looking to get into some naval affairs ourselves in Bryn Shander. Well, I don't know too much about naval affairs. Can you be more specific? But you know about ships, right? I know a little here and there about ships, mostly just what I heard from, you know, the stories and the sailor bars. I'm looking to get more into that myself, but as of right now, I wouldn't call myself an expert. Markham gives a confused look peering past your shoulder, nods his head towards the U-Bow ship, which is clearly yours. You sure about that? I'm an aspiring sailor, Captain, but, you know, not too much hands-on experience other than just those couple of times. Stop that. I heard you were the one that calmed a giant whale in the middle of the sea. I mean, if that's what you mean by naval affairs, sure, I'm your guy. But I don't necessarily... Listen, I've been in Bryn Shander most of my career, and I've heard enough stories from naval officers that whale attacks are surprisingly common. That is surprising. Well, whale incidents, they don't really attack from... That's no matter. I think you could be an asset to us, Jib. Me? I think so. Well, what is it you'll have me doing? Well, for one... Get your ass on that ship and learn a little bit more about it, why don't you? Go on a couple adventures. Come back. I think we'd like your expertise when we consider how we navigate the sea. I hadn't really ever planned on coming back here, but, you know, if you're looking for help, when is it you need me to be back? Things like this are slow to move. While I am fiercely loyal to the speakership and proud of my militia, we're not exactly an expedient people. Okay. You can tell that... Markham's chilled out a little bit. But again, you met Markham during a fucking riot, so that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense, yeah. Jib is a little disheartened to hear that there might still be work to do in Icewind Dale. He was hoping to make a clean break from this <laughs> God's forsaken place, but he nods. All right, I guess I'll be seeing you then. He gives you a curt nod and walks back to his barrage. You can hear him grumbling about a very rude barrage driver and a whole entire day of travel with this asshole as he gets back in the barrage and goes away. Uh, the true final boss, barrage boy. <laughs> <laughs> as Markham leaves, Jib kind of mutters to himself, oh, it's not really my problem now, is it? <laughs> not my problem. Good name for a boat. K-N-O-T, not. Like rope. Anything else you want to do in this moment? For right now, I want to walk up the gangplank, gaze out at the horizon, and see a little something moving out in the distance. Spectral form wreathed in blues, greens, and purples. Awesome. And start hauling some rope, getting this ship in order. Hell yeah, you do that. All right, we now go, just a short couple of days later, back to the campaign office. We see Roman, Simon, and Tash, and they're celebrating. It's done. 20 companies down the coast. I think we're really doing it. We're making a difference. Roman, I still can't believe it when I think about that fucking debate. I never would have thought we'd have a chance. And here we are. Tash gives him a hug. There's so much left to do. Simon nods to her and she leaves. After she leaves, Roman will say to Simon, nervously, So it's done then. Did I do well? You did exactly what was asked of you. Giving the black sword, the Wraithesite, in exchange for murdering workers put everything else into motion. We could not account for everything, but the young girl and three outsiders were a blessing. What will happen to them? I would prefer to keep them all close. 
and I believe compelling arrangements have been made. But if not, this is what I ask of you next. Keep them here. Especially the girl. We need her. You must ensure she stays. Bremen is fine, but if they go any further, arrange for Kessa to be taken care of permanently. For now, I make my leave. As he goes to walk away, what about the election? Anyone can occupy a chair. A throne isn't even a symbol. A throne is nothing more than a word. It's like the wind. It just passes through, barely felt. So, it doesn't matter what happens, and I do not care if it is you or a corpse that sits in some meaningless chair. Fail Barosh is gone, and we have access to Rathosite. And now, our real work can begin. He pulls, out of his pocket, a necklace, its appearance that of a shimmering silver snowflake. And clutching it, he says, to give Oral the world she has always deserved. And that's what will end. Oh. Don't like that! Wow. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. With music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.